of Masterson's confronting a Netflix executive who then responded saying that Netflix did not believe the women that had come forward against him. So this report is coming from Huffington Post. There was a victim that approached Andy Yeatman, who is the director of global kids contact at a Netflix at Netflix at a soccer game. This victim known as victim B, she's remaining anonymous, asked what they were going to be doing about the allegations against Masterson and was told by Yeatman, quote, we don't believe them in reference to the alleged victims. The exchange was witnessed by numerous people that were at this soccer game and a spokesman for Yeatman did say the following. Quote, while he was coaching a youth soccer match today, Mr. Yeatman, a Netflix kids programming executive, was approached by a stranger who did not identify herself or explain her connection to Danny Masterson. The statement read, Mr. Yeatman's comments were careless, uninformed, and do not represent the views of the company. Further, he would have no insights into decision making on the ranch. We are aware of the allegations against Danny Masterson, and we are following the current investigation. We will respond if developments occur. Um, this is it's a pretty harrowing account when you read all the details in it. Apparently, after leaving. Uh, the the woman victim B said, "I'm one of them." To Mr. Yeatman, and then uh, when he was speaking about it with her, and it was a tearful exchange, uh, she said, "I hope no one ever says that to your daughter." Uh, the case against Danny Masterson has been reopened. There are a number of different allegations, but what we do know right now is that Netflix released in a tweet after discussing with the producers, "We've decided to write Danny Masterson off the ranch. Yesterday was his last day of work, and we'll make new episodes in 2018 without him." Just to bring you guys up to speed. If you're unfamiliar against the, uh, with the allegations against Masterson, this is what's going on. At least four women have accused Masterson of raping them in the early 2000s. Masterson has been under investigation by the Los Angeles Police Department for about a year, according to the Huffington Post. But the case has stalled, apparently in large part due to Masterson's Scientology affiliation. The Huffington Post reports that after one of Masterson's accusers filed a police report in 2004 saying that Masterson raped her while she was passed out, the Church of Scientology intervened and submitted more than 50 affidavits from Scientologists who denied the woman's account. So, I mean, that's dense. Yeah, that's there's a lot dark. Here there's to a unravel. lot to unpack because yeah. we're talking about layers and layers of a cover up. And then we're talking about the Church of Scientology, which has a history for silencing victims of abuse across the board. And then we're also dealing with this account that I thought was just really. Made me feel very emotional hearing about this woman confronting this Netflix executive at a soccer game. Now, I will say that this is a guy that probably, I believe, has no affiliation with the ranch. I'm not he exactly. He doesn't, but I think his answer was still a little telling. I agree with you, but I'm, I think but I'm just like, saying that like this guy this must is have classic been classic executives at media companies. They're not going to do anything until it blows up in their face, right? And if this woman had not gone up to him and started this, and this didn't turn into a news story, Danny Masterson would still have a job right now. I, I agree with you. I'm just saying because that and it's just there's victims. There's not just one victim. Yeah. There's multiple people, and there's a history of this thing. It's a kind of at this point, it's like a well-known thing. Even then, it's he he had like the balls to say we don't believe them. It's gross. He didn't pull that out of his ass, like the way that the spokesperson is trying to make it seem so Netflix can like protect itself. Like these are executives that talk to each other and they know each other, and this is how they felt about it. I agree with you. I think his response is not appropriate at all and not sensitive. And I am glad that he got called out in front of all the, a numerous amount of people at a soccer game. What I'm saying is that I think. Uh, I can only imagine this scene. You know, when you hear the account, he must have been incredibly off guard. But it still is really unsettling to know that. You know, if I was caught off guard like that, if someone were to be like, "Hey, what do you think about these sexual, you know, abuse allegations against this person that works for this company that I know that you work for?" I would be like, "Whoa!" Let me take a minute and process this. What's going on? Who are you? Like, let's talk. What's happening? And right. for his sort of curt response to be, "We don't believe them," and then go on to business as usual, I think is is just sort of shows that probably what you said is true that Netflix was not prepared to deal with the allegations against Danny Masterson unless, you know, sort of a public spectacle like this occurred, which is exactly what happened. You had a bunch of witnesses that corroborated this guy and his response to it and the victim B's response to it when she came forward. And it was just it was really moving and and awful to read that yeah. it sort of had to come to this boiling point where you can imagine this woman is like I'm not even really sure how she knew that this guy coaching a soccer game, a youth soccer game would it worked for Netflix, I'm not really sure, but you can just imagine 
her being like, God damn it, I want an answer, and yeah. confronting this person, being like, I don't really care that he doesn't work on the ranch or that he doesn't know Danny Masterson. I don't give a shit. I need an answer yeah. for why this abuse, why this abuser is still retaining this Just, huge fat check from Netflix. Yeah, she feels helpless, and like that sucks. So the media has, I mean, this past year we've done like a great job of uncovering all these things. And while there's a lot of focus on the victims and the perpetrators, I think there needs to be more focus on the entire systems in place that allow this to happen. That's And that means the executives, the people mm -hmm. that are making these decisions, the people that know of these rumors and they don't do anything about it until it blows up in their face because it's just it's making money for them and they don't they don't see any reason to stop well, I, mean, I think that's sort of the irony here is that it's that's the, it's the real the problem. Right. That's how you fix this at the end of the day. Right, but the, the the irony is that you know we were talking about in our in our show intro that I'm not sure if it was going to go up on YouTube, but basically that the ranch I just saw on a Watch Mojo video is like one of the top ten worst received yeah, and Netflix they continue. shows. So it's like, wait, this is so you are not you're saying you quote don't believe these women because of this huge cash cow. Like the Ashton even the, even the incentive is like that's awful. Mm -hmm. you, like the, the the money isn't even there, so it just comes down to human decency, which seems was uh, devoid in this. Uh, in, it's really frustrating in this work environment. So it is it is really frustrating. Uh, like I, like I don't know. Just like one last thing, like this whole Matt Lauer thing that happened. These the, his bosses, the executives, they knew about this. They had to. They they let him. They signed off on him building a lock system in his office so he could press a button and lock the door. Mm -hmm. Why are why are we like we should destroy Matt Lauer and like he should never be able to like be back in business again? But like, what about the people that like let this happen for years be, after years after years because he's like a top talent? Yeah, like, he can have anything he wants if he wants to make like a a rape dungeon in his in his. In his room, we should like build the lock for it. No, it's disgusting, and we need to hold those who are complicit accountable. And I'm, I'm hoping that that's the move that we're gonna be making. We have to go. When we come back, we're gonna be talking about another Netflix show and the future of House of Cards. Stay with us.